welcome to another Galactic Mayan Astrology Report. I hope that you journeyed the seed well and you didn't lose control of your Mario Kart vehicle. <laughs> I love that that came through last time. Um, and if you did, I hope that you recognised... Oh look, I just pop out on the track again. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, I had a really wonderful time. So there's many things on the stove at Joshi Offerings. So make sure you're connected with me on Facebook to keep your eye on what's bubbling. I'm Jyoti iMix Rider on Facebook. So we're moving into a new wave spell. I was jiggling my legs then and then I think I'm jiggling the, uh, the camera stand. So I'm going to sit still. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to. Um, but yeah, we're moving into a new wave spell on the 20th of May, which is in the energy of Red Earth. So red earth is a red sign and the red signs are all about awakening, are about beginnings, are about dropping into a different way of being and beginning something anew. And sometimes when we're beginning things anew, we're stripping back to what was there, you know, before, before the conditioning, before whatever else. So, Red Earth is really about our relationship with the planet, our relationship with reality, and our relationship with our bodies. It's a sense of navigating reality. Where are we navigating reality from, essentially, is what Red Earth is about. The potential of this archetype and our experience of embodying this archetype is being able to follow the synchronistic flow. You know, it's this way of being that is so gridded into following the current and finding our way and, you know, feeling at home in reality and feeling in loving relationship with the force of everything that exists that we also are. But that part of us, that human part of us, being able to surrender into being guided and being loved by that part of us. And at the moment, I'm really developing like a, a deepening connection with spirit, you know, with all that is, with God. Um, and, you know, just that, it's like all parts of me feel on board now. Whereas in the past, there were parts of me that weren't, you know, and this is kind of what Red Earth is about. It's like the more, because I've had a really huge journey with my body that I'm only just really starting to move through. And, you know, when we don't feel at home in our bodies, it's hard for us to feel at home in reality. And therefore, we can often feel that reality is not a safe place because our body doesn't feel like a safe place. And it's like the, the ripple of this notion of safety, you know, that kind of comes through red earth. It's like when we feel safe, we're in the flow. And when we're in the flow, we're embodied. You know, we're, we're able to be alive, essentially, alive in this reality. Whereas when we've got stories about, you know, either our body or our place in the world or this sense of belonging, it's difficult for us to then grid into the flow because we don't feel safe. So that means when we're not feeling safe, we are responding from trauma all of the time, as opposed to responding from integration and being able to tune into these like subtle capacities of the human being that allow us to navigate. So when we've got trauma we've all got so much trauma but when we're operating from trauma response we will respond to what's coming into our world in a different way to the way that we would respond if we're in feeling safe mode so our relationship with the earth obviously as red earth is a really big part of this as well and there's something of that I really witness within people, you know, that I work with and that inspire me. When people feel safe, when they feel integrated, they want to help the earth. 
they want to help people and often there's this idea of drivers that somebody once shared with me so you can have someone that seems really well integrated and that seems really successful and that seems really together but what's driving that is fear, is insecurity, is trauma. So maybe on the surface, they may appear to be very well adjusted and okay. It's actually that reaction is in response to the trauma. And eventually the trauma will catch up, whether it's through physical illness or otherwise. You know, it doesn't just disappear. But then obviously you've got other people whose trauma sends them into a very obviously traumatised life reflection. So this thing of drivers, when our drivers, are, our trauma drivers are dismantled, we then get to basically live our soul. We get to live our galactic self. We get to live our purpose. We get to, you know, we're following the meaningful coincidences as opposed to running away from the things that feel scary. So it completely shifts our method of reality navigation. And this is really what the Red Earth is about. You know, it's about how we navigate reality. What is our relationship with synchronicity? What is our relationship with the planet? Do we feel at home here? You know, and another piece for me alongside the body, the body journey is also this this thing of belonging you know i've really 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 struggled to feel that i belong but what i've noticed over you know the past 10 years or so is that actually i've always felt that i belong to the earth but i've struggled to feel that i belong to humanity or the society that i've kind of been born within but that's because you know a lot of us that feel that way are here to potentially suggest an alternative. So within this wave spell, there's two really beautiful things that you can do. Connecting with the earth and, you know, spending some time grounding, spending some time with your hands or your feet or your entire body on the earth, on the grass, on the mud, on the sand, in the sea. However, you know, however that manifests for wherever you are on the planet, but just being like skin to skin with her, skin to skin with the planet and allowing yourself time to be present in that space, allowing yourself time to listen. And that's really, you know, a big part of Red Earth in the light, I don't like the light and dark thing, but in the light aspect of the archetype is this ability to listen. You know, we're able to be still enough and to be quiet enough and to be connected enough to listen and to feel our way forward. Trauma creates chaos, you know, so it's very difficult for us to stop and to listen. But giving yourself some time just to grid into the planet, to spend some time in presence, even if it's raining, <laughs> which I know in the UK is <laughs> often the excuse like oh well it's, it's more often my excuse it's raining i can't go outside today and then i love it when i go outside so i don't know what i'm about but just the programming stuff so there's that piece but then also there's really this vast aspect of your body spending some time with your body so this is a time for movement you know and I think another thing that I'm really realizing, you know, I spent a lot of time doing like the cognitive reprogramming, you know, and the mindset work and the clearing on a, you know, emotionally clearing through, you know, revisiting and rewiring. But there's also a piece of the body, you know, and the body holding trauma and the body needing to express as well the things that we have experienced and you know if that's not permitted to be expressed it gets trapped in the body so this is also a really wonderful time to to dance to do uninhibited movement to shake to stretch to 
again allowing your intuition to support you to release the stories from your body as well as releasing the stories from your mind you know and clearing on that level there is something so profound and powerful you know that we have here with this body you know the wisdom that these bodies hold that the human being vessel holds is profound but again we don't often take the time to slow down and to listen you know it, this mind focused reality pulls us out of connection with the earth and it pulls us out of connection with our body as well so the earth really the earth archetype really invites us to slow down and to listen so what is it you know can you give yourself a little bit of time outside connecting with the earth and can you also give yourself a little bit of time to just listen to your body and to see what your body is is asking for it might be delicious food that's really healthy um it might be a bath it might be a massage you know whatever it is <coughs> it might be a need to scream it might be a need to to express it might be a need you know whatever it is that your body is wanting to bring out giving yourself permission and time to allow that to happen because the more that we connect in with the earth and we operate as that one one consciousness that's grounded in their bodies the more that we're then able to grid into the synchronistic flow and also the other thing you know is just to remember that yeah your body is a magnificent thing and if you're struggling to feel at home in your body to start loving it you know i had a really this journey for me with my body that's just begun actually like the lead up to it was using flower essences i made myself um like a body love flower essence thing that had like loads of different batch flower essences within it that were all about you know body love and i started using that and for me like gentle medicine and i think for a lot of us that are star seeds or whatever you know using things like homeopathy and flower essences is really really cool because it's very gentle and it allows things to move gently as opposed to sitting and you know drinking medicine or whatever and going totally out having a really awesome experience and then coming back but without much integration i think the more subtle the more subtle medicines the more subtle energy medicines allow us to you know it's an embodiment process i don't even know why i told you that but clearly there's somebody that watches this that needed to know that so there you go so yeah so within this process get yourself grounded that's the top and bottom of it listen to your body allow whatever needs to emerge to emerge let yourself process through your body let yourself connect to the planet and find your way you know what is your how does your intuition talk to you you know how does your body communicate your intuition to you yes there might be aspects of your intuition that are more like psychic that come through in you know that more mental capacity but there's also like this whole body system is psychic you know so how does your body communicate with you how does your body express for you how does your body tell you when there's something that you're not looking at so it's a real time to tune in to slow down to listen and also to rediscover your place your place within your own body your place within your relationships in your life and your place within the world you know we're all here we're all here together and we've got more in common than we think that we have <laughs> and as we unravel you know we really get to see that more and more so as i said at the start of the video if you're not connected with me on facebook joti imich rider come find me or imish um which is the kind of correct pronunciation because the imish is the red dragon in my own astrology so so yeah find me on there if you haven't already and i hope that you have a really beautiful wave spell um,